Uh-oh, it looks like Intel has a big cooler problem. Also, we have another trillion dollar company on our hands and another trillion dollar company released products that uh, actually seem to live up to their marketing statements. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on this very here internet while you enjoy your breakfast. Let me know what you're having for breakfast down below in the comments as we get to talking about what's uh, gonna be for Intel's breakfast and its power, its juice, it's all of that thermal velocity you could throw at it and uh, the coolers that can't actually fit on it because in case you're not familiar, Intel's upcoming Alder Lake is supposed to be on a new socket, LJ1700, which is 500 more pins than the previous generation. And it's also gonna have a new socket mount, which is something that they haven't done in many generations. So if you have a cooler that you've been using in your PC, it is no longer compatible with Intel's next gen CPUs, which, is not a problem. This has happened for AMD in the past with AM4. You just release mounting hardware upgrades, which is typically the path that CPU cooler companies take. They'll ship you a free mounted kit so that you can continue on your merry way using your cooler. Well, there's a new report coming out from WCCF Tech that indicates, um, it might be pretty bad if you tried to do that. While the new mounting hardware will be totally fine and it'll actually sit on the actual chip because of differences of the CPU having a lower Z stack height, which means that they are shorter little boys. They're a little bit further down into the socket than normal. You may not be able to get proper mounting pressure on some of the coolers in order to cool them properly, which could lead to thermal issues. And with previous reports that we've had where Intel's next gen chips are supposed to be consuming 330 watts, which is a lot, by the way. Just because they're overclocked a little bit, uh, this could be a bad thing and your chips may be very, very hot. So the coolers tested were Corsair's H115, Cooler Master's ML design, as well as a few others. And you can see here based on the image that at least the Corsair and the Cooler Master one had really rough just uh, mounting pressure because of the chip sitting so low. When the cooler's making contact, it's not making full contact and being able to fully dissipate all of the heat there. Now, obviously there's a lot of questions surrounding this. Can these companies upgrade their mounting kits to make it so that they can sit a little bit further down? May it require more than just one little piece, but instead might have to require a whole new mounting mechanism in order to get them to sit lower on the board. Or is this potentially something that Intel and these cooler companies are gonna have to work out for coolers moving forward. As you can see, based on the image, MSI's on the left does seem to be performing adequately, even if other ones aren't. And it does seem like previous generations of CPU coolers might be having a harder time, more so than the more recent coolers. But in case you're gonna be upgrading to Intel's Alder Lake, not only do you have to spend 600 plus dollars on the chip because they're not releasing low end versions, not only do you have to upgrade to Z690, which is gonna cost you another three to 400 bucks because again, they're not releasing low end versions at first. And and then you also have to upgrade to DDR5, which is gonna be 50 to 60% more expensive than DDR4. You now likely have to get your own cooler. If you're committing to Intel's Alder Lake, you have to go all in, my friends. Is this something that you're planning on doing? Let me know down below in the comments. And I'll let you know what I'm planning on doing. That's telling you about today's video sponsor, ButcherBox. This is how my family gets meat, my friends. And if you use our link in the video description, you can get a free 10 to 14 pound turkey in your first box with them. ButcherBox so simple, you sign up using our link in the video description and you get meat delivered straight to your door. You don't have to buy it at the grocery store and you're getting great meat. It's high quality, 100% grass fed beef, free range organic chicken, wild caught seafood. It's all delicious and it's more than affordable at under $6 per meal with free shipping. Everything's perfectly packed and portioned for your needs. ButcherBox works directly with the farmers to make sure that everything's done properly when you get your meat sent to you. And it's, we haven't had to shop for meat at the grocery store for, I think we've been using ButcherBox for over a year now and we're not we're not stopping anytime soon i'll tell you that and you should stop doing things the way you do it use our link in the video description get a free turkey my friends we've all got that turkey day thing that's happening whether you live in america where it's thanksgiving or you don't live in america like my south african compatriots just eat turkey if you can find it at the local spa i found a turkey at a spa once once, okay, and we bought it immediately. And it was right around Thanksgiving, and then we had load shedding, and then we lost the turkey, and I was very mad because we we're gonna have turkey in South Africa, but it didn't, I'm just gonna move on from that. And we're gonna move on to the next generation of games. You wanna know what the future of games is? It's playing on an RTX 3080 on your Xbox, because now that's a thing, because the new version of Edge on Xbox now supports GeForce Now, or rather GeForce Now now supports Edge, the proper 
proper way of saying that. So you can now support GeForce Now on an Xbox, which means you could get all of the gameplay that you could possibly want for $500 if you can find them in stock, which Xbox Series X are really easy to find in stock if you're at least trying a little bit. I've been able to purchase two or three in the like half-assed attempts that I've done at purchasing consoles. I've been able to get like three or four Series Xs snagged up uh, in my cart. And then I just didn't go through with the process because I was like, why do I need a Series X? I don't. And I could have flipped it, but I didn't. But my point is, in case you want the best way to play, uh, Series X is actually looking like a great deal. With Game Pass Ultimate, now you can support GeForce. You, you're having tons of options, my friends. Tons. And you wanna see what kind of options you have on the PS5? Go check out yesterday's video over on UFD Tech where I tried a 6900 XT with a PS5 and a hardware ray card with the PS5. You wanna see that. And people wanted to see Halo Infinite and it got a new gameplay trailer yesterday showing off for the first time in over a year what 343 Studios has been working on. The game releases in just about a month on December 8th. Can't believe my math is correct on that. Like it's, it's a month and a week, roughly. Somewhere in there, maybe two weeks. It's two weeks. Okay, okay, it's two weeks from a month from today. Okay, it's still, we're still six weeks out. December's coming fast. Anyways, people uh, noticing, and I noticed that the gameplay definitely does look better, not as uh, boring and unpolished as it was at the first uh, Xbox showcase with Halo Infinite. Uh, definitely looks better. Good thing that they spent that year of delay making things look pretty good. What do you think of Halo Infinite? You planning on picking it up? Let me know down below in the comments. And I'm gonna let you know what's not down below. It's up. Crypto stunks. Bitcoin up three. 3.5% of the day to be at 62,784. Ethereum up 3.6% to sit at 41.92, almost at 420 or 4,200 rather. Dogecoin down slightly on the day to 26.6. I saw comments being like, stop covering Dogecoin, stop, start covering Shiba Inu. No, nobody can, the only people who think Shiba Inu is a meme are crypto bros. People out in the general world don't think it is because they don't know about it. People out in the general world know about Dogecoin though. So that's where I'm sitting on that. GameStop up slightly, $4.19 is, I messed that up, $173.99 at close. AMC also up very slightly to close at $36.87. More crypto stuff though. It looks like Twitter's gonna be rolling out a section on their platform where you can view how many NFTs people have, how they're destroying the world, destroying the country, destroying the economic system, destroying their sense of sensibilities with the fact that they bought so many dang dope NFT collectibles. It's just, what are you collecting? Digital things. You're collecting a token that points you to a server. What's that token good for? Well, it's only good as other people value it. I, I don't know, man. I feel like this is just the, the Beanie Babies craze all over again, but digitalized. And you know what's the next craze, but electrified. Hertz bought 100,000 Teslas being announced yesterday. This is the largest purchase of any electric vehicle whatsoever. Them announcing that it's gonna be just part of their plan now moving forward with electric vehicles. 100,000 of them with them starting to roll out at major Hertz locations sometime in November, them releasing a ad with Tom Brady in it. He may be able to deflate footballs, but he ain't able to deflate my spirits when it comes to Tesla. This looks like a good thing for Hertz after they've filed bankruptcy all the way back in June, if you can remember that happening. But it's also a really good thing for Tesla. They shot up their stock price to $1,028.91 to $2486 at close, up 12.66% on the day, which now makes Tesla a trillion dollar company, joining the likes of Apple and Amazon above that trillion dollar valuation. They are the most valuable car company based on market cap, just not even close to everybody else. Toyota second place, $240 billion. Tesla now valued over a trillion. Does this make sense? You tell me in the comments because I can't see the right way here, but I will say that this makes as much sense as Lucid being the 16th most valuable car company without having shipped a single gosh dang vehicle, but I won't comment too much on that right now. More Tesla news, Panasonic unveiling the 4680 battery cell, which is supposed to be the next generation of batteries that's gonna be going into Tesla vehicles. Them showing it out that they're gonna start test production in March sometime next year. You can see that's a big boy 4680 referring to the diameter size of and the height of these, these things. You see 1865, 2170, 4680, they just get progressively bigger. And Tesla's making this part of their structural battery packs where the Model Y and the Cybertruck will actually have their battery packs be part of the frame, which means anytime you're in a major collision, 
your car's totaled because you have to replace the entire freaking thing. At least that's how my baby brain understands it. I'm not, it, I'm not an insurance adjuster. I know how much these things cost. Panasonic, very excited about that. YouTube, not excited about people who are making lazy kids content. They're gonna start demonetizing anything that's not good effort content for children on their platform, specifically saying that they're gonna demonetize anything that encourages negative behavior and attitudes like bullying, dishonesty, disrespect to others, dangerous pranks, unhealthy eating habits, and more content that's deceptive educational. That's Blippi! That's freaking Blippi! They need to demonetize Blippi! <laughs> content that hinders comprehension, content that's sensational or misleading, and content that includes strange use of children's characters. Why this is only happening now, I'm not so sure. I thought that's what this last adpocalypse was about, but now it's it's even more. And they're also gonna be demonetizing if it's heavily commercialized, like where it's just all unboxing stuff and they're just promoting to you content in a paid promotional advertisement that they don't disclose to you because your little baby brain's not smart enough to understand it. And is your baby brain smart enough to understand that notches and that whatever Apple does in the industry, listen, everybody else is gonna freaking copy it, okay? Number one, because Apple does it for practice reasons when it comes to just buying things at the scale that they have to ship things out at you kind of take what you can get and then things are made the way they are you think they're making all of the decisions no they're limited by the economies of scale of certain products and that's why they only release things at certain times all right you the iPhone 12 they didn't have 120 Hertz because they couldn't make enough panels for it all right you didn't, only your know, iPhone 13 could possibly have it it's the same thing that's coming up now with the MacBook Pro having the notch on the freaking display you think that that's Apple trying to lead you down the wrong path of having to no, that's the industry's not not gonna move down that direction. Samsung showing off a tablet that has a notch on no! the freaking thing in the worst no! possible place, in landscape no! mode. What is that? What? This is the worst. I hate that. I hate that so much more than having a notch up top on portrait. And oh my goodness. But people don't hate the new MacBooks, the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros coming out with reviews. Everybody seemed to indicate that Apple uh, definitely has a lot of heavy hitting technology on their hands here. Specifically, I want to read from a non-text review of the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, saying that on the CPU side, doubling up on the performance cores is an evident way to increase performance. The competition also does that with some of their designs. However, how Apple does it differently is that it's not only scaled the CPU cores, but everything surrounding them. It's not just four additional performance cores, it's a whole new performance cluster with its own L2. On the memory side, Apple has scaled its memory system to never before seen dimensions, and this allows M1 Pro and M1 Max to achieve performance figures that simply weren't even considered possible on a laptop chip. The chips here aren't only able to outclass any competitor laptop design, but also competes against the best desktop systems out there. You'd have to bring out server class hardware to get ahead of the M1 Max. It's just generally absurd. These chips, heavy hitters. And this is from a non-tech a, a company, a resource that is known for being incredibly thorough with the reviews, especially on things like CPUs. Apple has come out with really good hardware. You could argue whether or not the software is there to take advantage of it, but I think this is a good indication that x86, it's on its last leg. Companies like Intel and AMD need to adapt because companies like Apple will come in and start just subverting the market and we're seeing real, genuine competition coming in. The, the fact that these this performance level is available on a laptop is insane. It's absurd. Obviously, it's expensive. It's a professional level tool. Professionals have to pay a heavy price for the things that they use. It does make sense. But at the same time, this is showing us the future of what the next generation of computing is gonna be like. Not gaming, but computing and general workload stuff. Very excited for it. If they can do this, which is like production class stuff, imagine, just for a second, imagine if Apple was like, you know what? We're gonna make a gaming system that's gonna beat the crap out of Sony and Microsoft. I'm excited for that. I want to see what happens. More competition is always a freaking good thing. Obviously, you can complain about it being Apple. You can complain about the Apple tax. I can already hear the comments going off in my brain. But I will say, you don't have to buy it. You don't have to buy Apple stuff. But the fact that they exist in the market and they're putting pressure on performance and making things better is a good thing in my opinion. And it's a good thing in my opinion that this episode of Hot News is over because I'm gonna dig myself into a further hole when it comes to the comments and the things that I think about all of this kind of stuff. So why don't you check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where we talk about Intel's GPU pricing and how it's a, it's a little much, it's a little expensive. And I'll see you tomorrow for a new episode of Breakfast, my friends. Cheers.